I think a lot of people would agree that the masking tools that we have inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, essentially the Adobe Raw editors, have, have become some of the most used tools in our photo editing. I know for me that, that I actually end up uh, spending most of my time in those masking tools. And that's why it's even more important to know the, you know, the multitude of little tips and tricks and undocumented things that are buried inside of Adobe with those tools. I think it's even more important to know what some of those are. So in this video, we'll take a look at five things that you may or may not have known about these tools and can definitely help make using them a little simpler and faster. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, the first thing is, is that we're inside of Lightroom and we're gonna go to the masking tool over in your toolbar here. And so this is generally where we're gonna be using our tips. Uh, don't forget that if you're in Photoshop and you open up a raw photo or you go to the filter camera raw filter menu, that there is a masking tool in there. And just about every tip we're gonna talk about here will work pretty similar inside of Adobe Camera Raw and even the, the cloud version of Lightroom as well. So the first one is, is let's head up to the masking tool. Uh, it actually wouldn't have even been an issue six months to a year ago. So let's just say, let's just say I do something to the photo. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, linear gradient on the sky here. So I do something to the photo. You might have noticed that Lightroom Classic has gone in and separated out the different sections inside the masking tool. So when you roll them all up, you can see that we have a tone, color, point, color, curve, effects, detail, uh, different panels in here, almost like we have the panels inside of the main editing interface. The problem with these is it can get just as confusing as the main editing interface, where if you open up multiple panels, it gets really you know cluttered. You end up spending your whole day scrolling up and down trying to find the panels that you're looking for. But in the, in the main interface, we have a little trick where we can right click and go to solo mode. That's already on there, but you know what? It's not on by default inside of your masking panel. So even if you turned it on in your regular panels, your regular global edit panels, you still have to come up here to your masking panels, right click and turn on solo mode. That way, as I'm working here in tone, if I decide I wanna to go to the color panel, I click on it, it'll roll up and close the tone panel and now I can go to color and do whatever I want it to there. If I wanna go back to tone, I can do it there. So most people don't have the screen real estate to keep all those open and it does cause you to scroll a lot. It's more of a personal preference that I find uh, a lot of people choose to have these panels close as they go to open another one. But just know you can right click and you can turn that solo mode option on or off if you need to. Okay, moving on from there. So let's say we do another, so let's go into this one. Let's do a select sky. And I'm gonna make the sky a little bit brighter, but I am gonna pull back on the highlights. Just pull back on some of the bright parts, make the sky a little bit brighter. Um, I would probably go in here, maybe even uh, boost the whites just a hair, boost the contrast just a hair, pull back on the blacks, go into color here, add a little bit of color saturation. I can even go into effects and sometimes clarity can be a good one for some clouds. You don't wanna go crazy with the clouds and make them gray and black, but a little bit of clarity can help up there as well. Now, the trick is, is that you may come back to this photo a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, and you look at the sky and here, let's do something just a little bit more drastic to it. So let's say I make it really bright. And you look at what you did to it. And I think this happens with everybody, our moods and our tastes and our editing styles change. And you look at this and you think, all right, you know what? My sky is too bright. So you come back over here in your masking tool, you click on that mask, opens up your editing controls, and you start to realize that you've done things all throughout all the different panels here. Well, up at the very top, there's an amount adjustment. And that amount adjustment will gradually bring everything you did lower or higher. Okay, so it'll basically, as you go down to zero, it's as if you did nothing to the photo. You're essentially zeroing out every adjustment slider that you moved. So, so you go down to zero, it's as if you did nothing. Uh, if you take it up near 100%, it's the full effect of all of these adjustments that you moved. And then if you go over 100%, well, it's just increasing them. You don't really know how much, but it is just increasing every adjustment in there. So it's, it's not the right way of editing, it's just a different way of editing. Everybody's got something a little bit different that they like to do. Some people would prefer going through adjustment by adjustment and tweaking it to get it right. Other people just wanna come in here and say, hey, you know what, let's just pull that back a little bit, back to you know almost, almost create a 50% opacity layer between the original photo and the way that it looks now. 
I'm gonna jump in here for a very quick word from our sponsor. If you are a Lightroom or Camera Raw user, I have AI adaptive presets. And the interesting part about these, they, they work for wildlife photos, they work for skies, they work for landscape photos, and I've also got a portrait one as well. Make sure I put links into the description there. But the cool thing about AI presets is that they use the AI technology built into Lightroom and Camera Raw, and they work for both of them. Uh, they use that AI technology that's built in there to adapt to your photo. So even though they might have been created using the subject or the sky or the background from another photo, they automatically adapt to whatever photo that you start to apply them to. And if you use the previous tip that we just talked about with the amount slider, presets become even more useful. They can be a good creative boost and also a time saver. But once you throw that amount slider in there, then when you apply a preset, you've got a very quick way to go in there and adjust uh, the intensity of that preset for your specific photo. So I do hope you'll swing by and find out a little bit more. All right, back over to our tutorial. We've gone through two quick tips here. The third one, is, is one of the ones I use the most. And that is I'll often do, if you remember in our last example, we made a mask of the sky and I, I did a bunch of adjustments in uh, this tone panel for it. In fact, let's get our amount panel back up to a hundred. So I've done a bunch of adjustments in this tone panel. And sometimes I just, I wanna get them back to zero. And rather than going and clicking, and you can, the, the keyboard shortcut is double click on the slider or the adjustment name, and that, that'll send it back to zero. So that's a free, a free tip for you. But rather than going through each one and double clicking or trying to set them to zero, just hold down your Option key on the Mac or your Alt key on the PC. And in any panel, and that actually just doesn't work in the masking panel, it works in all of your other panels. In any panel, you'll see at the top, it'll say Reset the name of that panel. So in this case here, I'll just click reset tone and that'll reset all of those adjustments in that tonal panel to their zero defaults. Again, just to show you, this isn't just, uh, this isn't just inside of here. So if I go to, let's say I do some texture, I do some clarity, I do some dehaze, which I would never do because it makes the photo look really bad. However, I can hold down option or alt and you'll see it says reset presence and it just resets them all to zero. So it works in other places than just the masking panel. Another one that people miss a lot, which could be, I think if anything, as you're starting to use masking, could be one of, one of the most important tips with this stuff, is for example, let's say I'm gonna take my brush, all right? I'm gonna create a new mask here. I'm gonna take my brush tool, and let's say I want to do something to the rocks, all right? So I'll, in this case, maybe I'll add a little bit of contrast, uh, maybe make them a little bit brighter here. And I'll go and I'll painstakingly try to go brush over on the rocks. And I'm gonna make it a little bit more obvious what I'm doing. In fact, we'll go over to effects. We'll add maybe even a little bit of haze reduction to them. And uh, again, a little bit brighter a little bit contrast here, maybe even open some of those shadows for each one. So what I'm gonna do here is brush, right? And it would be pretty painstaking to go through and try to try to brush just on the rocks. We do have an auto mask setting with our brush that, that can help out with that. But what I would argue is, as long as you're using a fairly feathered brush and mine's set to 100, all right? We can go through here. I don't really care too much about the foreground because that's, that's fairly easy to avoid in this case. Right? And in fact, that feathered brush really helps us out with it. Again, I'm not too crazy about this edit. It's a little too bright for me, but it, I think you gotta see it to, to, help, to help, the, uh, help the tutorial make sense. So we're going through here and we're brushing and we're doing all this. Again, I don't even see it spill over on the foreground. Where I see it the most in my example is it's spilling over onto the sky. Right? You start to see a halo uh, appear around those rocks because my brush spilled over onto the sky. Well, one of the things that you can do is we have a subtract button for every mask that we create. And I think sometimes we fall into the, we fall into the same trap of the way that we used to do it. We, you know, if we brushed, if we had a brush, we were really limited to just you know, subtracting with a brush or with the gradients tools that we had. But with these new masking tools, you can subtract anything. So in this case here, you look at the photo and you think, okay, well, I don't like it in the sky, so go to subtract and just click subtract, select sky, and it'll pull it out of the sky for you. So you don't have to hold down your option or alt key and subtract or try to use auto mask and be perfect about it. You could be a little bit more freehand in the way that you're brushing on these things and just use 
the feature that's already built in here to automatically remove it from the areas that you don't want. And then our last one is, let's go ahead and uh, let's just get rid of that mask because I don't really think we need it. I've just made a good example for what we were doing there. Uh, the last one is masks, or at least your AI masks, are presetable. Okay, and what that means is if I create a mask here, for example, I created a mask of the sky, all right? Let's say we made that sky a little bit brighter, pulled the highlights down, boosted the whites and blacks a little bit, maybe even put a little bit of color saturation in there, okay? So I did something to the sky in this case. I made it a little bit brighter. Okay, I don't wanna go too bright, but just a little bit. All right, so I did something to the sky. Well, you can go over to your presets panel. You can create a new preset, in this case, I'm gonna check none and I'm just gonna call it bright sky, all right, with saturation. And what I can do is go over under masking, I can turn that on and turn the mask that I want on. Even better, what would really help is go in here and double click the name of your mask and name it sky, all right? So that way it's a lot more apparent what it does. Then go create your preset. Again, I'm gonna turn everything off and we'll just choose bright sky and saturation. And I'm gonna hit that masking, turn on that mask, and we'll hit create. All right, so I just created a preset. So if I go under user presets, you'll see bright sky and saturation. But the cool part about that is I can go to a different photo and I can click on that preset, I can even hover over it, depending on the speed of your computer. Sometimes your, your graphics card won't support this. So if you don't see the photo change as you hover over, it just could be your graphics card is not fast enough. But you can hover over that and then you can click on it and that will apply that same exact mask to the photo, but you'll see it updated it, the AI mask for the sky that's in this photo. It's not using the same shape mask, that was in this photo here because you can see they're very different, right? It updated the AI mask to automatically work inside of the preset. So you can take AI masks, which mainly are gonna be select subjects, select sky and select background, as well as select people. You can take any, any of those top sections or if you're looking at this panel new, subject, sky, background or people. And you can take any one of those and use it and create a preset from it. And when you apply that preset to another photo, it'll automatically detect whatever the subject or the sky or the person is in that photo. So it really speeds up the masking process and the preset process if you do use them. Also, a great video to go to next. If you haven't seen what's new in Lightroom, um, recently Adobe did announce some changes to it. So uh, if you're looking for another video to go watch, this would be a great one to check out next.